Welcome back. This video will be about rocketry certifications. Certifications are in essence a test that demonstrates a hobbyist's skill and safety competence in building and flying model rockets. Earning certifications unlocks access to more powerful motors, allowing you to fly rockets that are higher, bigger and faster. In most jurisdictions, such as those operating under the NAR or Triple E framework, there are three levels of certifications all within the High Power Rocketry or HPR category. They are Level 1 for rockets launching with motors of H to I impulse, Level 2 motors with J to K impulse, and Level 3 motors from L to O. Now remember, each successive letter in alphabetical order indicates a doubling in motor impulse, so it goes from park flyers to sounding rockets pretty fast. Each level is assessed differently and may vary between Tripoli and NAR prefectures. Or if you're in Canada, where they have four HPR levels under the Canadian Association of Rocketry. These certifications are meant to serve as a systematic approach to earn your ability to fly larger and inherently more dangerous rockets. Do not rush through it. They're not a speedrunning competition or a box to tick, and I see many folks try and find loopholes on how they might be able to obtain their certs faster. Instead, you'll probably just end up pissing off some of the old folks running your club. Since rushing through the certs defeats the purpose of getting familiar with and learning at each level before being prepared to move on to the next. These certifications are not legally binding and are only recognized by these parent organizations at the events they hold. That being said, they're a great way to build your skills and earn credibility within the community. Notice how I haven't mentioned NPR certifications, which is the topic of this video. Well, as of around 2021, most rocketry clubs across Australia introduced and adopted the NPR or Mid-Power Rocketry Certification. NPR rockets are those flying with motors of impulse F to G, and are the step below L1 rockets. In most clubs across the world, anyone is eligible to fly such rockets without certification. However, with this new introduction in Australia, NPR certifications are now required prior to any of the three HPR levels, and basically follow the exact same rules as a regular L1 cert. Now that you have a little background on this, it's time to get into the build process of my NPR certification rocket, the Orion C. My goal for this rocket was to test a couple new build techniques to produce a thoughtfully designed and aesthetic rocket. Firstly, the regular body tubes I've used for my LPR rockets are simply too small. I used the only large cardboard tube I could find, which I honestly couldn't tell you where it came from. What matters was that it was big enough to accommodate a large motor without going too high. You see, I wanted to be able to have the option to fly this rocket at local low and mid-power rocket events, some of which have strict altitude ceilings. 
For instance, the Wayland events with New South Wales RA have a ceiling of about 1000 feet or 300 meters. On top of that, I wanted to experiment with creating as smooth of a surface finish as possible with this rocket. That meant filling the spiral of the cardboard tube with epoxy clay, a two-part putty meant for repairing holes and also several more coats of primer and sanding than I typically do. I also experimented with using this epoxy clay as the fillets of the rocket. My honest review is that I probably won't use this method again, as once it starts barely hardening, it becomes very difficult to handle. It tends to get stuck to my hands or my forming tool, and separate like Play-Doh when compressed instead of acting like a homogenous fluid. That being said, the results weren't too bad, and they ended up with these ultra strong thick fillets that turned out alright. With some final paint designs and some decals, the rocket was done. For some context, the C in Orion C denotes composite, which is the typical propellant type in MPR motors. That is, the same propellant used in HPR motors. However, this rocket will first fly on a black powder MPR motor, sourced through... means? Essentially, an MPR motor of any kind is very difficult to get your hands on in Australia at the moment, and the black powder variant means this rocket won't go too high. To ensure this rocket doesn't breach any altitude ceilings, it came with a payload bay with the ability to add ballast weight to the nose to bring down the apogee altitude. All of course derived from open rocket simulations. With the rocket and the motors ready for use in flight, the next several months consisted of cancelled launch event after cancelled launch event, both with the Canberra Rocketry Group and New South Wales RA, meaning this rocket would have to wait a lot longer than I would have liked to fly. That was until... Malele is a launch event for all rockets, meaning HPR rockets can fly with its extended altitude ceiling of around 10,000 feet, around 3 kilometers AGL. This meant I no longer had to worry about my ballast weight, but I initially intended to fly in this configuration anyway since I didn't want to change all of my flight planning and simulations at the last minute. However, Malele is infamous for its... well, have a listen. Yeah, it was ludicrously windy on the day, and after a brief conversation with someone at the event, I came to the conclusion that this ballast weight should be removed last minute. This all has to do with rocket stability. Let's have a look at this first example, which is my rocket in its ballast configuration. This is considered overstable, meaning its center of mass is greater than two body tube diameters above the center of pressure. For context, I was comfortable flying an overstable rocket if it meant I wouldn't breach any altitude ceilings. 
As the rocket launches, stability is induced as air flows over the fins. The problem arises when there's a strong crosswind, where overstable rockets will have a high tendency to weathercock, that is, pitch into the wind. Again, I was aware of this phenomenon and willing to take the risk of some weathercocking, as I knew the delay of the motor could accommodate some extreme trajectories and still safely recover the rocket. However, it wasn't until a pretty basic physics phenomenon was pointed out to me that I finally decided launching this configuration in these conditions was not a good idea. The winds, for context, were measured at a consistent 25 to 30 kilometers an hour. You see, in extreme cases, with a stability caliber of 5.46 for instance, the rocket has a high moment of inertia, if you take the fins as the point of reference. This means the aerodynamic stabilizations of the fins have a very hard time overcoming the pitch moment of the rocket with such a high center of mass especially in these extreme winds. Take a look at these demonstrations of inertia, where it takes a lot more force to adjust the rotation of the object with masses far from the axis of rotation versus the object with masses close to the axis of rotation. Now take a look at this conventionally stable rocket with the nose weight removed. Notice that in the same breeze, it does not pitch nearly as much into the wind compared to its overstable counterpart. You can now hopefully understand why I opted for the second configuration instead but maybe I could have made some different decisions. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it was time to launch. Ryan C playing an F15 to 374 meters. Pad C1 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, as you can tell, this bad boy went high, and with its frankly oversized parachute, it drifted almost completely out of sight, right into somewhere in the middle of this giant waist-high oh cotton God, field. Oh, I never was able to find the rocket in time. With that slight inconvenience, I made sure my next build was something robust and reliable that, again, wouldn't go too high even without ballast. For this, I would adopt the mighty post tube. This 30 second time lapse basically summarizes the entire build process for this new rocket, and I didn't try nearly as hard on the aesthetics this time. After dubbing it the Orion C1 after its fallen predecessor, it was ready for its debut to finally attempt to earn me my MPR certification. Okay, pad B1 in 5, 4, 3, 2, one. 
There's an event and a shoot sound. That's Huge. looking really good. That's good. Huge. Someone get this out today. Someone get this out today. Yeah, that shit's big enough. Imagine if you'd find the bigger one. Yeah, that shit's big enough. As if you'd find the bigger one. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, next up we've got Ethan playing Iron Mutton on pad A1 on an A10. Perfect. Playing Iron Mutton on pad A1 on an A10. Perfect. Why doesn't it have like the internal shower Oh, it's just a hole in it. Yeah. Yeah. Just goes for a real. What have you used? Toroidal. Oh yeah, Toroidal. Yeah. Wow, look how nice you laid out in his little skin tax. Nose cone's still there. It's warm. Blankets cooked. Blankets cooked. It's what we like to see. Shoot's not charred. Or oh, have a look at that. Shoot is... Ooh. No, it's that's just, ink. That's yeah. ink. This flight was truly flawless, with one of the smoothest launches and parachute ejections I've seen to date. And I was officially given my certification after this flight. This whole NPR certification thing became a lot more of a journey than I expected. Originally with the goal of attempting it last year, delays pushed me into early 2024 until I obviously lost my rocket to the wind. But finally, I can put an end to this chapter with this beautiful flight of the Orion C1. What's next? Well, my L1 certification, of course. And if you're not already aware, I'm already well underway on its construction, and you can see me build it live on this channel. The VOD of the first build stream is already up on the channel, and there will be more live streams as I finish the build process, so make sure to come along and I'll see you there. Until next time, see ya! I <laughs> I'll get drone footage of it in the tree. I'll I'll fly a drone. Michael video Michael when Michael when NPR said. Three, two, one. <laughs> nah. Will. Nah. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> oh. 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 Ignite a fire. It's That's a fire. fire. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>